If you can't out soul win me, shut your mouth. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That was your response? It was not my intention to do this. I was relaxing. I wasn't going to do anything until tomorrow. But then I saw William Murphy's response to everyone's outrage at what he did on his own, not forced to do so. Everyone was outraged with the demonstration and what we thought was an utter disregard for the holiness of God, his people, and just really how you approach him and how you present him to other people. Now, we might be wrong. Might be right. I think the mere fact that more people have stated that they were outraged, who don't know him, who have no issue with him, don't know anything about him. When other people see this, other professed Christians see this, and your knee-jerk response is to not understand what they're saying, but to uh, attack or to name call or to talk trash or to, as you say, shut their mouth. That's a problem. It speaks not to them, but to you. If you are in the right, well, then shouldn't you show us how it's done? Shouldn't you be the bigger person, the wiser person? But the fact of the matter is you just showed, I think, uh, again, more proof that you should not be in that pulpit. But without further ado, let's go ahead and play his response. And then I'll offer my response to him. And I pray, I pray that someone in his camp gets this response. This is a series of spiritual encounters and uh, natural encounters. I think where the church has erred in seasons past is we have not learned how to be, as Paul says, DJ Dex, all things to all people. Now, what he's getting at, Paul makes a statement in 1 Corinthians 9, 19, that, that I become all things to all that I might win them. What Paul is not saying, and this is what he needs to understand, I've seen people do this before. They would try to kind of bring down the standards to someone to bring them in. That's not what Paul is saying. Paul is not saying that, you know what? To those pagans, I'll indulge in pagan rituals and worship and so forth just to bring them in. No, as a matter of fact, we saw Paul do this on display all throughout his missionary trips. He's speaking to the people, to the unknown God that you're talking about. Let me tell you about the God that you don't know. And so that's what Paul's point is. Paul is not, Paul is not compromising. Why? Because Paul is not going, Paul understands, he wrote it, what fellowship has light with darkness and we're not going to be friends with the world. And so the Christ that you present is the Christ that they're going to keep. And so if you present a Christ that is okay with you having lyrics that are ungodly and using the church as though it's a club, and this is what the secular, the unsaved folks are saying about it. That is not what Paul meant and that's not how, how it should be done. And so you are misusing the scriptures either intentionally or unintentionally. Uh, I just got off the, uh, hey, y'all do me a favor. If people are on here saying stupid stuff, and yes, I say it's stupid because it's stupid. 150 people got saved. What, did, wh what? How many people got saved at your church Sunday night? Let's start there. This shuts the conversation down, y'all. Don't, don't argue with nobody. Just ask them. How many people got saved at your church Sunday? No, 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 I'm not. No, no, not the people who were mad at their last pastor because he held them accountable and they left mad. And then they came to join your church because their season shifted. Now, I'm not talking about those folks. I'm talking about folks who weren't in church, who felt something supernatural in your church and decided to partner. If people can come to your church, not hear the word presented properly, not hear the word, and they place their faith, as they say, in Christ, but it wasn't the word, it was the music, it was the jamming, it was the dancing and so forth. Well, then what do they place their faith in? They place their faith in a God who has no standards, a God who is like the world. And the Bible tells us, warns us about creating a God of our own, a God that looks like us. If we're LGBTQ, we got an LGBTQ friendly God. If we are a socially conscious person, then we've got a God who is a social conscious warrior, a social justice warrior. That's what we have. We don't have that. No, we have a God who has a standard. And what you did was you presented that. But then you say that um, if people aren't winning. So, well, first of all, you've got a large platform or a large church. People are coming because a lot of folks know, you know what? I should go to church on New Year's Eve rather than the club. And then they end up, lo and behold, look, I'm at the club. You have a problem with people having a problem with that. And what, what did you say? 150 people got saved. Question. Sincere question. How do you know 150 people got saved. You don't. 
That's the answer. You, there might have been 150 people that actually signed their name and said that they gave a profession of faith, however you measure it. But there's no way for you to know. There's no way. And the fact of the matter is, the question is going to be, do they know what they place their faith in? Because there's a lot of people that said that they did. Matter of fact, what does Jesus say? Jesus makes his statement. He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, maybe 150 people may have said, Lord, Lord, but may not be. He says, uh, not all that do so will enter the kingdom of heaven, but those, but he who does the will of my father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, we have done many wonders in your, in your name. We've cast out demons in your name, prophesied in your name, all these different things. And what will Jesus say? I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work, you workers of lawlessness. So it's possible because let's just say one hundred and fifty people did place their faith in Christ. It's possible they did. What does it say? What, but but does that mean that you are saved yourself? Because what we're seeing, it makes us scratch our head. And you can't be upset because someone else is upset and then call them stupid or saying stupid things. That's not how it works, Bishop. If you can't out soul win me, shut your mouth. Okay? <laughs> there you go. All right. So now that's what you say. If you can't out soul win me, then watch your mouth. So here's the challenge. I'll take you up on your challenge because this is what I started off doing. This is what I've been doing. And so you you just give me the date. You give me the place. It can be the worst part of Atlanta. It can be where all the prostitutes are, where all the drug is. It can be all it can be the 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 most gang infested place of Atlanta. You tell me or it can be the best part. Not some place in your neighborhood. No, let's go find some place where they really need to hear the word of the Lord. Let's go just you and me. If you want to bring four or five buddies with you, that's fine. And then let's go share the gospel because the winner ultimately is going to be the people and the kingdom. Those folks get to hear it and then we'll get to see. You won't be able to bring your dancers. You won't be able to bring your DJ, your music, your lights. You won't tell anyone to walk it out and do this swag and surf, whatever they call that. None of that. Just the word of God, which you have been lack, which you have been lacking in handling the text properly. Let's jump in here. I'm listen. I'm excited because the place that I'm from is winning and you can judge me all you want to. I'm excited because the place that I'm from. Let me back up for just a second. Let me let, let, let me apologize for that. That was sort of that was a little too aggressive. I did mean shut your mouth, but it was a it was a little too aggressive the way that I said it. But. If you're not getting people saved, you have nothing to talk about. Okay, that's that's the end of that. That's the last. Now, the thing is, you don't know if the people that are criticizing have been saving souls. You don't know, and I shouldn't say saving souls, because here's the thing is, this is the sad part is, you make it seem as though you're saving souls. No, no. If people if people place their faith in Christ, it wasn't you. If you were used for that, well, then amen. But you're taking the credit. And so you don't know how many people have been used by the Lord to play, to bring people to him. God may have used Mary, John, or Frank. And if, if one person came at Frank's preaching, well, then praise God. If 30 people came at Frank's preaching, if 20 people came at Mary's preaching or Bubba's preaching, or if 150 people came at your preaching, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the demonstration that you put on and you think no one in the body has the right to say anything about that. You think that no one should have enough concern about the word of the Lord, about the body to say anything. You think that when, when Jude says earnestly contend for the faith, that you were exempt from that if you did anything to upset somebody. I think you're wrong on that, my friend, because what we're going to notice is that th through this entire response you're giving, we'll, we'll give scriptures. Keep giving scriptures. You just didn't. Last time I'm going to do that. So, well, I'm going to say this one last time. I'm going to say this one last time. If, if my ministry offends you, unfollow me and don't ever come back because I'm not your man of God and God has assigned somebody else to speak to your life. So if the way that I do ministry offends you, unfollow me and never come back and I will see you in heaven. Hopefully. Again, you may not be there. You may not be there. And your ministry, it's not that your ministry offends people. No, I don't follow your ministry. Most folks that I know that have, give common, have given some sort of response about it don't follow you. But when you say something or do something, well, then it's out there. I don't have to follow the murderer to have a response about this person's murdering. You don't have to follow the person, the liar, the thief, 
uh, the per you have to follow those folks, but when they do something that's out there, then we see it. And you did something, sir, that was just so outrageous that everyone is giving commentary to Christians and non Christian. You may, you may inadvertently, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, bring shame on the name of Christ, and you don't mean to. Maybe you don't know that. Maybe you're not wise enough to get that. But you have to be wise in your position because, according to Paul, one of the things, the qualifications that you must have a good reputation amongst those outside the church, as well as those inside the church, but also be able to teach. And I think that you are lacking that. Listen, a couple of things that we see. You have conformed to the world. What you did seems to be conforming to the world. And as though, especially in your latest deal with the uh, with the Brad and, and, and her wife, you gave uh, a platform or you gave a place, a safe space to, to christen the baby. The baby's innocent. That's not the issue. The issue is that you made them feel at home and it makes me wonder because I don't know that Jesus would do that. First of all, what you did, it's not necessarily that it's found in the Bible, but you seem to have a friendship with the world. That's a problem. Just like you didn't have a problem with um, closing up to the LGBTQ community in that regard. You don't have a problem with going off on people who are against abortion. You are for abortion. You don't think you have the right to tell somebody uh, about what they, who they can marry uh, and, and about aborting folks. And you give defense for that. Then you give a defense for Carlton Pearson, the person who denies the legitimacy of the Bible. Maybe that's why we're right here today. Someone who believes that virtually anyone can go to heaven and that there is no hell. You believe we should support him, that the church was wrong in turning their back on him. That's a problem. And you think that we shouldn't call out. Well, Paul says, am I now your enemy because I tell you the truth? Apparently so. Yep. OK. Did want to give you all something to say when people have negative commentary. If you can out soul win me, I will listen to you. You got a better strategy than me. I'll listen to you. If you can if you can out if you can out evangelize me, let's talk. I want to hear what you're doing. And I don't know if I can out soul win you again. It's not it's not the, it's not me. It would be the Lord. But I do got experience in this and not necessarily doing it from the platform of a church where folks are already coming for the party. No, but out there in the streets in the worst places with some of the worst people or the people in the best places. Doesn't matter. But you and I can do this. I'm taking up taking you up on your word. I'll come down there, foot my own bill, pay my own way and so forth. And then we'll just do this. Do it privately. No cameras, what have you, just just you and I. You can again you can bring your team and then we'll we'll do that. And let's just see how the Lord is using you. Because again, you can't use the gimmicks. It's just the word of God. If that is, that is, that is, if you're up to your own challenge. Because I'm I'm about getting people saved and reconnected to God. I'm not concerned about um your old approach to ministry that hasn't gotten anybody saved in years. Whew. Y'all excuse me. Y'all. And it just makes me wonder, though, if the people that are getting saved at your church act like you, then are they saved? See, I want I what would you rather have? Would you rather have 100 people place or write down or said they place their faith in Christ and don't live like that? Or one person or two people that place their faith in Christ and they are legitimately saved. They are bearing fruit. They are useful for the kingdom. Which would you rather have? Not the necessarily the number. It's not about quantity, as they say, but it's all about quality. Y'all didn't, y'all know I'm untriggerable. I'm not triggered. But I do get, I do get upset with the church because we, we just keep missing these opportunities to demonstrate the love of Jesus to the world. We just keep missing it. Why are we so eager and why do we have such energy? When it comes to attacking one another, that upsets me. I'm sorry, y'all. That I'm, and I'm y'all pray for me. That does trigger me. I'm I'm triggered by the fact that you have more energy to attack me than you do the devil, who's ravaged your family, but you waste your energy attacking me, or some other pastor, or some other Christian. No, no one's attacking you. People are just calling out foolishness that they see. And again, we're old enough to know what foolishness looks like. Don't act as though I'm 51 and there are folks that are older than me and younger. It's not as though we all of a sudden don't know what foolishness and ungodly behavior looks like. And so we need you to come and tell us, no, you're wrong. This is not ungodly. Again, we are we are well within our rights. As a matter of fact, it's our duty. Jude says, Jude uh, 3 says that he would like to talk about our uh, common salvation 
but he felt it necessary to write us, to tell us to contend for the faith. Because certain people, you might be one of those certain people have crept in unnoticed. Folks who look like they might be saved, but a little bit of, a little bit of world in them. By the way, can I just read you this passage? What you have done so far with what you did in, in the New Year's Eve service, with the LGBTQ uh, deal with the Brad with your support of abortion, you have done what Paul said not to do. Uh, although they know the ordinance of God, which I think you should, hopefully you do, uh, that those who practice such things are worthy of death. You, sir, not only do the same, not that you actually do it, maybe you do, I'm not sure, uh, but one thing you do is give hearty approval to those who practice those things. That is a problem. And then as far as people taking their energy to judge you, no one's wasting their energy. Anytime you call out sin, that's not a waste. Anytime you call out sin, that's not a waste. And the Bible tells us, Paul tells us, for what have I to do with judging outsiders? Do you not judge those who are within the church? And so, listen, our energy is focused on preserving and um, making known the name of Christ, the actual name of Christ, not some Christ that looks like the world, acts like the world, and is okay with the world's sin. Yet Christ found himself with sinners not to indulge and conform, but to change them. That's the issue, not dancing and, and, and playing the lyrics, ungodly lyrics to bring folks in. That's not what we see in the Bible. And so we are supposed to, if we love the Lord and someone has something to say about our father, why would we not have energy in defending that? Even if the person that we're coming and having an issue with is someone who claims to be a Christian. I don't know if you are or not. The fact of the matter is that you, if you died and went to hell, you would not be the first preacher who claimed to be a, a Christian who died and found himself in hell because he was too friendly, too much in love, too cozy up with the world. And that's the problem. You are presenting a false gospel. Forget about your doctrine. Oh, by the way, notice in your response, you didn't give any, any scriptures. You didn't use the scriptures to back up what you said. You simply used your emotions just like the world does. And my friend, that's a problem.